Okay, so part two, with a little more time on the clock. This reactor that I watched said that uh, anecdotally, everyone on his block had died, the houses were all empty. Now, is it possible that there are other reasons, right? The number one thing when it comes to something like this is you have to look at critical thinking, but you have to look at falsifiability. Are there other possible reasons or causes behind this besides what you're trying to confirm your bias with? Now, this gentleman had said that there was a lot of fake news and other things going around in America, but in Spain, maybe not so much. He'd seen what he'd seen with his own eyes, but then immediately said, don't give me your anecdotal examples in America of what's whatever. I don't know anybody that's got it. Well, that doesn't mean anything. Unless he had <clears throat> gone to the hospital or the, whatever their local government agency and requested and received the death certificates by name of all of his neighbors to confirm that that was what they died from. He was making a blind assumption. It's possible they'd moved somewhere else for a vacation. It's possible they'd gotten out of the city before things got too bad. It's possible that it come to the point where they um, didn't like what was happening and left the country one way or another. It is also possible that those people had vocally disputed either online or in private through, say, text messages or private messaging services, and then disappeared. There's all kinds of different explanations for it, but until he personally himself had confirmed with his own eyes, looking at official documentation stating causes of death and addresses that link to every house on his block, to say every other house on my block is empty and they all died of COVID is spurious at best. So then he said that he had been vaccinated himself, and he said that the reason for this was that he did not want to die. Well, in the previous video, part one of this, uh, I mentioned the 273 per day average daily death rate in America right now out of 350 million. Now, I left a comment to this effect and mentioned uh, the actual mortality among overall population is 0.0. 0.03% or three one thousandths of 1%. And that the mortality among vaccinated, according to the VAERS, Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, which itself on their website says this is an underreported number, could be anywhere from 1% to 10% of cases actually being reported. The number of mor mortality of deaths divided by the number of vaccinated was 1.5% about a month ago. Now, mortality <clears throat> among infected as opposed to mortality among population is a little different. It goes up by one order of magnitude because fewer people are infected than the overall population. So if 45% of people or 30% of people or something get their... Um, they get infected, of that 45%, that 0 .003 of all population reflects as about a 0.04%. So four one hundredths of a percent. Four percent of one percent, in other words. But that gets confusing. So you compare a 0 .04 among infected versus a 1.5% among vaccinated. You see the, the difference there. This would be mortality at an underreported rate among total population, something along the lines of 0.1%, so a tenth of a percent, which is two orders of magnitude greater than mortality among overall population of just the bug. Now, from a number standpoint, it's pretty obvious. That should be pretty obvious which one is more dangerous. So I said they rule by fear. They're controlling you with fear. You say you are afraid of dying. You say that uh, you and everyone in your household are vaccinated or will be vaccinated. And you said that you don't want to judge anyone for their choices. But if you're not vaccinated, we can't hang out. And based on your anecdotal story of everyone on your block dying, that 
you don't want to hear anecdotes from anybody else. Now, this dude, like I said, is otherwise very, very intelligent, very, very well read. Seems like a real smart dude. But this is where you get into that academia appeal to authority where they get suckered in and they don't question anything. There's no critical thinking. There's no actual, I better go look that up. And all the numbers I'm quoting are from official sources, the CDC, the VAERS, which is operated by CDC. Actually, most of the studies that helped refute the efficacy of masks are also published on CDC's website as like features, even though on their actual topic specific pages to do with that specific virus, the only studies that are uh, promoted there are tiny samples of one to 10 patients, no meta analyses of larger groups of data used to fear monger basically. This is where you say, well, see, I saw that one time, that one person did the thing, therefore this is how it is. That is anecdotal. Even if it's a paper that was written about the single patient study, that single patient study qualifies as anecdotal evidence only, unless you have got one or 2,000 single patient studies with the same meticulous detail, and then you can meta-analyze all of them together and create a data set. Until that has been done, which it hasn't, it's anecdotal. So I chose not to like or dislike that video because I don't want to dislike the channel and I don't want to like the topic of the content. So the only thing I can do, which is unfortunately also the most destructive as far as channel traffic goes, and that is to not engage. Now I left a comment, but I did not choose an opinion on like or dislike. In the same comment I left, I also mentioned the fact that they were uh, using that 273 people per day mortality rate at present to justify these invasive control measures and uh, stated flat out, they control you with fear. And after providing statistics and saying, I'm very surprised to see how many otherwise very smart and intelligent educated individuals are not thinking critically and not asking questions and not looking into these things themselves before making their own judgment and pronouncement based on what they're told without verifying anything. Simply stated that fear is the mind killer. So that's the thing. When you go to a hospital and the staff are either walking around in the disposable masks which they've got to know that at best you got 15 to 20 minutes tops in a non-sterile environment where you have to change masks constantly. All of that paper waste has to go somewhere. And the people wearing cloth masks, staff wearing cloth masks only, these are medical professionals having not apparently looked into not only the 95% pass-through as a filter, but the biological hazards that come with wearing fabric on your face, the moisture, the heat, the breathing, the inhale, the exhale, the various cultures of mold, mildew, staff, as well as the moisture, mold, and mildew, and staff collecting additional virions if you're in an exposed environment. that should be the first thing that they're looking at because they're putting other people at greater risk of spreading it around the community environment of a hospital as well as to themselves by risking their health as far as that particular illness, but not even just that, but of other unassociated illnesses that can come from mold inhalation, of mildew inhalation, of staff and a back uh, antibiotic resistant staff means that there is no treatment either your body gets over it or it doesn't
That's a, a, a common theme these days. I found a tick. It's a common theme these days of people who ought to know better not knowing better. You ask me why I look into holistic medicine, why I don't go to the doctor for anything. That is why. When I was at the gas station working, a dude came in at one point, had the plastic safety glasses over his glasses, but they were not sealed like goggles. They were just a front. He had two masks on, but he did not have his ears covered. Now your earwax generation is a mucous membrane. Your tear ducts are a mucous membrane. Your sinuses are a mucous membrane. And back in the tonsil area near your lymph nodes is a mucous membrane. As well as um, your urethra through your reproductive organs or your, uh, depending on your biology, those are mucous membranes. Your rectum contains mucous membranes. Now, you're walking around with pants on, you got underwear, you're not having direct membrane to membrane contact, you're pretty safe, right? But if your concern is airborne virions contacting a mucous membrane, you have to wear a sealed biohazard suit to be protected. Otherwise, you've either got pass through, you've got exposed things that you just didn't think about, or you've got pass around because wearing glasses doesn't stop shit from getting in your eyes sometimes. Think about it. People doing curbside pickups. There are a few that still do. It is, some of it I think is for, um, for safety's sake. Ooh, a fly. Some of it is for what they think is safety's sake. Some of it is simply for convenience. They don't even feel like getting out of their car. But even a curbside, even if everyone is masked, masked up, you're still making contact. Um, there is a lot of placebo of, of magic feather effect going on here. And you have adults, grown-ups, people who are supposed to be able to independently think, think critically, ask questions, verify, look into things, not doing so. It's just accepting what they're told, behaving in the way they are told to behave. And the scary part of that is we're now moving into the reporting your neighbors for extremism section. And I don't know, man, 1930s in Germany, how did that go? Lots of people were reported that had nothing to do with anything. They got kids to report their parents. Parents got locked up. The kids were put into government custody and further indoctrinated. That's what it is. So it was really sad to see this from this particular reaction channel. He had just not got into any of it. And while it can be said that a lot of them are just doing it for money on the reactions, that's really what they're in it for. Um, I've had interactions with other people in other comments about um, the uh, things like Tom McDonald videos and uh, people in the comments would be like, dude, you can just say what you want to say on your own channel. And what they will respond with is, well, I'm a university student and I don't want to get kicked out of college. I don't want to lose my credits. I don't want to lose my job. You've got other people that are still stuck in where they have been politically placed. Some of what you might call the so-called uh, Democrat plantation or whatever. There's a lot of people doing reaction channels that want to remain default Democrats and they still have not put any thought into it. They're simply too terrified. And those are the same people that say, well, I don't want to get into politics when it comes to matters of fact and statistics, not of whose side is better. Those are matters of opinion. I have these same arguments with people that I actually knew in person on Facebook where you would state a fact and they'd say, that's just your opinion. And I'd be like, no, an opinion is whether you think chocolate is better than vanilla, not 
whether you know I am using an Android phone to record this with because the fact is I'm using an Android phone to record this with. That's not an opinion. An opinion is whether iPhone is better than Android or vice versa. Weak-minded cop-outs. People who stand for nothing, believe what they're told, fall for anything. And at the same time, there are other people in the reaction community that say, yeah, that's bullshit. This is how I feel. This is what I think. And kudos to them. Because maybe their views go down, maybe their views go up. Because the thing is, they're concerned about getting canceled. They're concerned about comment flame wars. They're concerned about animosity from people. But the reality is, again, statistically speaking, you're looking at a vocal minority making it difficult for everyone else. A tiny fraction, single digit percent of the population subscribe to these things so wholeheartedly that they will go full Karen on you. A single digit percent. Less than 10%. What about the other 90%? That was kind of the same thing that uh, when Tim Pool was on Joe Rogan with uh, Jack and Vidya, and they were talking about wanting to be as inclusive as possible to all people. And what Tim equated that to quite correctly was, so what you're saying is that people who constitute about 3% of the population are being catered to. Meanwhile, people that constitute 35 to 45% of the population are being disenfranchised for the purpose of inclusion of this other tiny percent. Not to say that the tiny percent shouldn't be able to feel included, but to enforce rules that benefit a minority on the majority is the opposite of logic. As well as a terrible business model. And it's the same thing with reaction channels, because what ends up inevitably happening is the overwhelming majority of comments are positive toward a person stating their opinion and saying, screw it, I'm not going to hold back. There are quite simply more people who are not that vocal minority. And they are themselves not a silent majority. We have a vocal plurality as well of people who are like, yeah, dude, speak your truth, say your thing. We prefer that. And again, I'm same as with this other one. I'm not naming names. Not naming names on any of them. I've seen the full spectrum of it. And on any of them from any direction, I'm not unsubscribing. I still enjoy the reaction videos, but now it's like, okay, well, if you start to get political, I'm going to skip that video. And when I say political on that, what I mean is that now that you've said that you think things that aren't political are political, now that you are... And maybe I misspoke there, so let me, let me put it another way. Now that you've made clear that you do not think critically and that you follow your orders without question, when you give evidence that you are moving to opine in that direction again, I will avoid that content. Meanwhile, even though I may not agree with the things that the people are saying when they do state their opinion and say, screw it, I'm going to say it, I'm going to give them the kudos and respect for setting, putting their name out, stepping over the line, putting their neck out, and saying their thing. I respect that much more. So, yeah, it's just it's been a really interesting time getting back into uh, city, society, dealing with things. Um, honestly, no conversations or discussions on the matter have occurred with customers, nor will they. Um went to get my part for my truck and uh, I don't remember specifically what the, uh, oh no, I remember what it was talking about the fact that there is one major upside to this pandemic era thing with delivery and that is with an online previously uh, contactless um, delivery scheme with an app that people order through Customers become much more familiar with the menu on their own. They don't have to ask questions as much. They know what they want. They know how to get it. And somebody quite rightly put into the app a suggestion directly. How much would you like to tip? What this means is instead of humping for tips, grinding for tips, of being on eggshells and hopeful that you can get any kind of breadcrumbs, People are now automatically throwing on 
a percentage or a lump amount of tip. So you go to go out and do the thing and a credit card receipt comes out and the tip is already on it. And all you have to do is zip on over there. Well, guess what? I've said that five, six years ago that if it's like when you go to the sushi restaurant, you're supposed to tip the chef, the chef ahead of time. And this reminds the chef to be extra careful with the preparation of your food and thank you in advance. And so you get quality food. But if you walk into a place where it's customary to tip the chef ahead of time and you don't, you get what you get. Likewise, when a delivery driver is expecting that this address is not going to tip, they're either going to take their time, they're going to go get their soda before instead of after, or, you know, whatever. They're just not going to care. There you go. When you know this person's already dropped $10 on a $30 order for tipping, you're going to get right the fuck to where you're going. You're going to be like, hey, there you go. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Have a great day. The interaction is improved. So it has made customers more self-aware. And unlike the healthcare people who are in most cases lying, if not omitting about the situation to make it seem worse than it is, to, oh, it's so hard being on the front line, so essential. Unlike those people, when people were told to stay home and they listened, that's unfortunate, we've already addressed that, they do give a massive shout out and a thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you to the people bringing them their food. And guess what, dude? It's more than just like a waiter where they carry your food to the table. These are the people making your food or often the ones cutting and packaging your food and then delivering your food. So to those people, my eternal gratitude goes out. The ones who recognize the people that are going out into the world, they are not just bringing food to your table on a tray, they are risking car accidents, traffic tickets, road rage people, all kinds of things to go out. And guess what? People doing delivery house to house are more likely to be exposed to things than are people sitting at a table and carrying a tray. So yeah, things have changed a bit since the last time I was in this game. And I think in that respect, they have changed for the better. A lot of the, the things that I wish would come around have come around on that. It's just a goddamn shame that it took this ridiculous propaganda, government overreach, and what you can only call medical tyranny at this point to arrive at that. It would have been nice if it's, it's the same thing as the buyer's remorse for Biden. Well, how many people are like, well, if only someone could have warned us. That's my impression of Salty Cracker, by the way. If only someone could have warned us. Well, guess what? We did. We warned you for years and you didn't listen. And only after the fact, now that it is too late, people have come around to some extent. If only they had listened when we told them the first time, right? I'm going to cut it short there. Thank you for your time. This has been a long one. This will update while I'm driving in town where the uh, cell signal is much, much stronger and uh, this will upload much quicker. Um, the other bonus upside is if you've got an automatic app and a thing tracking where you're at to get you where you're going and, and process your doohickeys on your job, this also notifies anybody who's watching the uh, app to find out where you're at. They will already know you're there. I have to knock on people's doors about 5% of the time now, and that is freaking fantastic because it's not knocking and waiting and knocking and waiting and my arm is getting tired. Oops, I dropped your soda. This is doors open. They're there waiting for it as it should be. Like I said, it's really unfortunate the things that it took to get people to come around on some shit that five, six, seven years ago would have been really nice for them to be like, maybe I wouldn't have got out of the game. Maybe I wouldn't have burned out so bad for people being so fucking stupid at the time. The other thing is nobody I've uh, gone door to door with at this point other than a lady that I said, yeah, I got the note that says uh, no contact on the thing. Well, it turns out they're accidentally printing those on literally every single one. The only one that I had to deal with yesterday was a lady that said I was sick and I didn't want to get you sick. And I said, hey, I appreciate it. Thank you. It wasn't paranoia. It was, I'm ill and I don't want you to get ill. Three cheers and two thumbs up for self-awareness.